Hello, everybody. Welcome one and all to this live stream webinar provided to you by Haas. We're coming live to you from Houston, Texas. And uh, my name is Alina and I will be your host for the day. Uh, as I've mentioned, this webinar is brought to you by HAS, which stands for Houston Association for Space and Science Education. And at HAS, we make it our mission to uh, inspire young adults and youth, people like yourselves, uh, to pursue careers and degrees in STEM-related fields. Now, as I've mentioned already, my name is Olina, and I am a group manager for HAS. Hi, everybody, I can see all of your comments already. Uh, great, thank you all for joining us today. I see many people from all over the world. Excellent, um, I'll get back to that just in a second. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about myself. So uh, me being a group manager means that maybe some of you already know me. Uh, I work with Haas on bringing you guys to Houston and to inspire you to pursue careers and academic degrees in STEM related fields. STEM obviously uh, means science, technology, engineering, and math. So those are all future um, really important fields that we will need because you guys are all the Mars generation. And today we have with us one of you uh, practically, but I'll get to that a little bit later. Now, as you know, this is a webinar, but it's not a singular event, it is a series. We've already had a webinar a few weeks ago where our guest was uh, Mr. Christopher Texler, a really young, inspiring and inspired young man uh, who has his own rocket company and who taught us something more about how rockets actually work. Today, we have somebody you definitely already know and love. Uh, Miss Alyssa Carson will be our guest uh, for today and we will meet her later. You guys will have a chance to ask her some questions, interact with her. All right, so without any further ado, let's welcome our guest for today, the inspiring young woman, Miss Alyssa Carson. So say hello to Alyssa, everybody. Hi, hello, Alyssa. Hello. Thank you for coming in and thank you hey, for joining us here today. It's great to see you. You too. Excellent. Um, now, as you can see, many people are so excited to see you. Many of them have already been sending questions, even though it's maybe a little too early for that part quite yet. Uh, but without any further ado, let's just um, continue. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. So as I've mentioned earlier, um, you said that you've decided to become an astronaut at the very young age of three years old. Now, 16 years later, you're still pursuing that dream and you are, I would say, pretty close to achieving it. Now, was there at any point um, a, a thought when you would think that, um, you know, you doubted your decision, perhaps? Have you ever reconsidered your career path? And if so, how did you deal with that moment of doubt? Yeah, I mean, similar to oh, most kids when they're jumped around between different career, you know, possibilities to do in the future. Um, you know, it could change weekly. I'd want to do something else. But kind of the way I always thought about it was that, you know, let's say I was into being a doctor at the time, I would always say, you know, I'd be an astronaut, go to Mars, come back, and then be a doctor or whatever it was. For some reason, I always had wanting to be an astronaut as first and then doing whatever I would come up with. Um, so I kind of kept being an astronaut pretty pretty close to the top. Um, but I mean, definitely throughout the stuff, there's definitely been struggles and trying to keep up. First of all, it's really pretty just in general schooling curriculum and that kind of thing. Um, but just stay focused on your team and staying passionate about it. Mm, excellent. Now, you've mentioned that you even briefly considered becoming a doctor. Would that perhaps stop you from being an astronaut in any way? Um, so, I mean, that was like an, uh, an idea of like something that I was, you know, jumping between when I was younger. Um, I'm not necessarily on that path still today. So uh, I'm currently working uh, on studying astrobiology to be one of the for the mission. Um, so, I mean, of course, everyone's going to have to have some medical experience for the mission to Mars. We are going to be a medical officer on the mission to Mars, all those things. But most likely my role will be um, more is towards the research science um, and just, yeah, experiment side of the mission. 
Excellent. Yeah. So this is something that I think we would all probably need to point out that uh, astronauts are not just astronauts. They also have other professions such as doctors, researchers, other kinds of scientists, engineers, and so on. So anybody can go into space. Um, it just depends on how really determined they are. And you seem to have a lot of determination. Um, now, um, you were you achieved so many um, different goals already, and you have taken part in so many really important events. Um, for example, MER10, to name one. Uh, you attended that as at the age of 12, am I right? Yeah, that was uh, around 12, yeah, in DC. So you were the youngest panelist then, is that true? Yeah, the, uh, the other panelists were um, UPH. Also, an astronaut was on the panel, so yeah, definitely uh, a lot younger than some of the other panelists. <laughs> now, being the youngest, um, would you say you ran into any difficulties, or did you feel in any way uncomfortable, surrounded by all these experts, and as you've mentioned, the real astronaut, many engineers? Yeah, I mean, definitely at a lot of things, I've definitely been the youngest in many different situations, um, so it's definitely been something that I've encountered. Uh, pretty frequently, um, for example, like at this Mer 10 panel, obviously being 12, um, not really having that much of a stance, but being able to still be able to like stand up there at that time and just kind of share a little bit of my story, but uh, mainly just being able to contribute about my thoughts and, um, you know, how excited I would be for a mission to Mars and provide insight along with PhDs was pretty incredible just to there but it was a really awesome experience um and it was super cool because afterward like we did q a and everyone was asking me all these questions and so it was super cool to kind of like just be in that moment and yeah just kind of be there with those people have these people so interested and supportive of my dream which you know this was kind of right at the beginning stages so it really helped in propelling my dream mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you for that. That sounds um, intimidating, but fascinating too. And it's great that actually you were the one who got all these questions that they were asking instead of, you know, I would probably think it would be the other way around, but that's amazing. Now, um, that's not the only thing. You also, at the such young age, you already have so many different certificates and achievements behind you. For example, you have suborbital certification. You've also attended all of the NASA space camps and you have what they call a NASA passport. Um, you are a really, really busy young woman. You also study in a university uh, full time. You work with uh, BMW and Nike. And I just really need to know, how do you fit all that in in only 24 hours a day? Because um, I feel like you must be on some kind of a different schedule. How do you even manage to balance uh, your personal life and all of these amazing activities? Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because, like, we always joke that, like, I'm on mark time, so we just get, like, an extra 30 minutes every day to squeeze everything in, and it just kind of, you know, builds a long time. Um, but, I mean, for the most part, it's really just about time management. Um, but, I mean, I do feel like I have had, you know, like, plenty of time, I don't know, I guess, like, to relax or just, like, not be necessarily busy all the time i do think that there has been like a pretty good balance so i mean for example growing up and all through school and high school and stuff um you know i tried to keep on top of work and then if i were to travel i would also uh, do stuff while i would travel um but yeah i kind of just always kept a pretty good connection between like my teachers and me to kind of keep everything flowing well um and then yeah trying to make the most out of uh, all the opportunities and stuff that came by. A lot of what I've done has kind of been over the summer and, you know, during that time where I was off because there was, you know, so much time there to be able to go anywhere, do anything, um, just to also stay in school as much as possible. But even during the school year, trying to bounce around and um, just trying to see, you know, what's most important at that moment and, like, trying to decide which to do. But, um, yeah, it's just been kind of a crazy ride of always going and always doing something. But at the same time, it's been really fun to kind of do that and travel so much and uh, being able to experience so many different things. That sounds amazing. And all of that in just a few years, basically. I, I really don't know how you have time for all of that. And it's great to hear that even at such a young age, you have achieved so many different things. And this is exactly what we would like our students to, you know, to be inspired to do and pursue same kind of really busy, uh, but very rewarding uh, kind of line of work. 
and study. Um, now, you've attended all of these different programs and all of these different space camps. I was wondering, um, how do you know which ones to choose? And perhaps, do you have any mentors that help you and navigate you towards you know, the correct courses to take or the correct camps to attend? How do you decide? Right, well, I mean, yeah, so I mean, kind of like what you've said, like there's no really one way to become an astronaut. There's not anything in particular that you have to do. Um, so I think that's, you know, something really cool because as far as like camps go, you can really just kind of do what you're interested in. So I mean, really growing up, it was mainly what I was interested in, what looked cool. Um, so for example, you know, space camp was something I thought about and up loving it so I kept going um, doing you know some other camps it was if it was similar to what I was interested in then I would do it so it's definitely a lot about just looking uh, figuring out what kind of career path you want to go down and then seeing what all is available for, that. for example I'm sure if you want to take more of like a medical approach to wanting to become an astronaut I'm sure different levels of camps that you could go to that may be more focused on medicine than what space camp might be. And so, yeah, it's definitely just being able to look in your local area, kind of look what's around, see what kind of possibilities are out there, even even just finding someone who has a similar career and just asking them questions. So mm -hmm. it's just kind of, um, kind of exposing yourself to what is around. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've definitely had several people who have kind of helped me and given me some advice and like I said, like nothing's necessarily necessary to actually become an astronaut, but I mean, doing things like getting a pilot's license and having some of those experiences definitely could be beneficial later on in the uh, astronaut selection process. Mm, excellent. You've mentioned some people who have helped to motivate you. Um, do you mind mentioning perhaps who was your role model? Who inspired you? Yeah, I mean, there's been uh, several people along the way. Um, a big one was Sandra Magnus, who is uh, an astronaut. She was, um, she did several shuttle missions. Uh, so she was a pretty big inspiration for me when I was younger. She kind of motivated me that uh, it didn't really matter my age when I was starting, that I could still actively follow my dream. Um, also, some people from NASA that have been super helpful. John Conley, who I did meet on that MER 10 panel, uh, he was super nice and talking about, you know, International Space University and all kinds of opportunities and um, just some advice to kind of give to me. So he was a huge help and has continued to be a good friend since then. And uh, even through space camp meeting, so people, uh, you know, even some people that you guys have already here in Haas, like uh, mm -hmm. Andrea Hansen, she's a good friend of ours that we see over at Space Camp all the time. So it's really awesome to just kind of be in such a nice network. Excellent. Yeah, thank you for acknowledging that. That's uh, one of the things that I wanted to really point out, uh, that we here at Haas really believe in, you know, connecting and networking with those people who could really help you and inspire you and, you know, maybe, maybe nudge you slightly into the correct direction of pursuing those careers. And uh, this is basically what we're trying to do here. Unfortunately, you know, uh, with the epidemic of coronavirus and us not being able to bring students to the States. And I mean, even you, right, being in the States, you cannot really travel uh, at the moment. So the inability to travel and the, the inability to basically attend all of these camps makes it really hard for uh, people to stay motivated and to stay you know, inspired to pursue all of their dreams. Would you say that uh, perhaps online courses such as this or you know, others could be a um, like a worthy substitute? Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely right now is absolutely something insane, something that, you know, we're all kind of through it together. We're all experiencing it for the first time together. We're all just trying to make the most of it. And so kind of I do think that the way to do that is for all of us to stay connected as best as we can. And of course, doing either different courses online or staying connected online or Thing like that is going to be the best way to kind of continue learning right now continuing to have experiences build memories all kinds of fun um fun activities just like that mm -hmm. um so we can really do our best and you know continue building our stuff online um you know so many kids have done online school now and i think doing you know something like what haas is doing with their school here online um is going to be such a cool replacement to like what is actually going on or what would have been going on um but yeah i definitely think that it is kind of our best way right now to stay connected and you know if you were an astronaut on a mission to mars it would be how you would be connecting back to earth so you can always just pretend you're in a mars simulation <laughs> 
<laughs> that's true. That's an excellent point. So all of our viewers today, you can just pretend that um, Elisa is actually in fact in space already and not on planet Earth anymore. And you're just talking to her directly um, to the ISS. Um, thank you, Elisa, for that. I really love that um, acknowledgement. Now, um, I would like to ask you um, a follow-up question. So you being a full-time student in a university and you know not being able to go to classes and having to take online classes sounds like quite a difficulty. Um, how do you motivate yourself when you face difficulties or when you come across um, you know, a, a past where you don't really know what to do anymore? How do you keep yourself motivated? What do you do? Yeah, I mean, definitely motivation is something that everyone struggles with. Everyone has had days when, you know, they just don't feel like doing that certain piece of work. And, you know, it's something that everyone goes through. Um, so, yeah, so like I did, I finished like my spring semester online. And then I'm also even doing a couple summer courses that I'm also doing online. Um, so I'm definitely, you know, since moving uh, kind of back home to finish my school and all online, I've been trying to kind of stay more organized, maybe even more organized than I I would have at school um, just to make sure I kind of stay on top of things. So I actually have like physical calendar that I have everything uh, laid out. So that way I know like, OK, today I have to do this and get everything just kind of done. Um, but yeah, I think a good thing to kind of keep in mind is while we're staying home, it's important to, you know, continue to get a few things done, you know, even if it's not um, a whole lot every single day, even accomplishing, you know, one task, one assignment, whatever it may be, attending one webinar um, is actually, you know, really beneficial for you to actually have something to look forward to, feel accomplished. Um, and so I think it, that's kind of a big aspect of it as well as wanting to, you know, get something productive out of the day, um, get something beneficial out of uh, everything that's going on. Oh yeah, that's true. I, I do believe in that, that, you know, making even a small little thing that sounds kind of insignificant can still, you know, make you feel less stressed probably and, you know, accomplished for the day. And, you know, it's just baby steps uh, one after another. Um, speaking of stress, um, would you say that your line of work brings a lot of it? And if so, um, how do you handle it? Yeah, I mean, definitely, I would say, definitely isn't the easiest path i mean even in um schooling and stuff you're going to take pretty difficult classes which obviously can bring a level of stress i think even just in general almost like levels of fear could get in the way you know some of like the different trainings that i've done have been you know jumping off platforms and all those kinds of crazy things that might bring on that level of fear so i definitely think it's all about um just kind of hitting it straight on just going for it um definitely stress is something that in your way um so it's always important to kind of take a moment to kind of ground yourself and realize you know go back and think like why you're doing it what your goal is what is actually going to come out of all the hard work you're putting in you know especially in school you know you're not necessarily doing all of this work um for nothing it is going to be beneficial and it's going to outcome for something so i definitely think that looking towards the future um and just kind of remembering what is coming is kind of super helpful i think you know for me it's super motivational knowing all the all the crazy things that could happen in the near future especially talking within the space program you know there's it's such an interesting time so much stuff is changing with the private sector spacex you know looking to bring people back uh for american soil all these exciting things uh are kind of happening right now in the space program so i think that you know, since that's kind of my interest that kind of motivates me because i know how successful we will continue to be in the space program and i look forward to being a part of that that's true. Um, speaking of the SpaceX and, uh, you know, private space travel, uh, many of our attendees today, they have mentioned that they're looking forward to the 27th of May, right? The first American launch in how many, what is it, nine years since? What What do you yeah. think about it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's absolutely insane to think, you know, I feel like so many people have been waiting for this and mentally preparing for this moment, definitely when the program ended. 
it was definitely just kind of a hit to most Americans just because I feel like there wasn't necessarily all that knowledge about what was coming next. And I'm glad to see that we're finally here for everyone to truly understand, uh, hopefully now, what exactly all is coming next um, and all the great things that we have coming uh, in the future for the space program, you know, with long term of going back to the moon and Mars, but also kind of just bringing um, the space program more alive, I guess, through a soil, you know, having more launches uh, from Kennedy and all that. Um, so I definitely think for people who are, I guess, are less attached to it, it's going to kind of bring that love for space and that excitement for space back to everyone. True. I feel like um, there's a lot of excitement, especially building up uh, and not just, um, you know, for scientists or people like us as students, aspiring scientists, engineers and such. Uh, but even I've heard that there will be even a movie being shot in the ISS station. I believe Tom Cruise was supposed to go in space at some point. I'm not sure if you've heard of that as well, but that sounds like a really um, juicy kind of um, space gossip. Um, some of our, our attendees have also um, briefly mentioned. So. Um, what do you think with um, basically privatizing space travel or you know, being able to now have private companies that would um, start sending people to, uh, to space? Um, do you think that there is something that will happen anytime soon? Like for example, will the ordinary people like us be able to just buy a ticket and fly into the ISS and hang out there for a weekend? Do you think that's a possibility? Yeah, you know, I think all of the exciting things about um, private sector uh, space companies is going to be a pretty cool game changer for the space program. I think kind of the most exciting, you know, we eventually will get to the point of more people from the public are going to space. But I think even more exciting than that, since we have kind of these added companies who are working in the space industry, we now have so many more space jobs. We're going to have so many more people going to space, working for space, being involved in space somehow. And so it's kind of cool to kind of see all these people all of a sudden coming and working in the space industry. Um, so it was kind of, um, you know, a very exciting time. And I do think that, you know, getting normal people in space, possibly, you know, either a trip up into space for a few hours or the International Space Station, whatever it might be. I do think that it's coming pretty fast at the moment. I mean, kind of like Virgin Galactic working pretty hard to kind of get to that point of more space tourism. Um, so I do think that we're getting close. Uh, so hopefully, you know, we'll see some pretty cool in the future for, you know, an average person to be uh, traveling to space. Yes, well, hopefully so for all of us. Uh, you probably will. You surely will. Um, but most of us uh, might not get a chance unless we really buy a ticket to one of those rides. Um, now, as we've already mentioned many times, um, you are really moving towards you know, becoming an astronaut. And as soon as um, maybe there will be flights to Mars, you are quite possibly one of the first people who will have a chance to step foot on Mars. And you even wrote a book about it. Would you like to tell us something more about it? What inspired you to write yeah. this book? Yeah, so the book uh, is called So You Want to Be an Astronaut. Um, the book is, is very focused on mainly just helping people kind of figure out how they can not only just become an astronaut, but also just kind of follow their dream in general. Um, because I definitely do think that, you know, if you are interested in an astronaut, it's kind of kind of like a personal path that you kind of have to take because it's like I said you kind of have to figure out what career path you want to go down there's no one thing I can tell you to do that will actually get you to become an astronaut there's about a million different paths you can take to actually succeed in that um so I definitely think it all starts kind of with you and what you're doing and what you actually want to pursue as a career so it kind of can help in leading people down that path of actually working them through the process of figuring out what they want to do, what they can do with that, um, and how to actually continue following that dream, some resources as well. Um, but definitely can relate to not only wanting to become an astronaut, but also any dream in general. You know, it definitely is a guide of like, yes, this is my goal. This is what I should continue to do. Here's some things to think about when you're looking at following your dreams. So it's kind of just like a simple guide to kind of help you um, follow own dreams kind of similar to what I've done. Mm -hmm. So it's all from your personal experience. Right, yeah. So there's a lot of tips in there. Um, like I said, some resources, some advice along the way. I mean, definitely I related back to, you know, my story and like my dream of being an astronaut um, from my experience, but definitely everything, all the advice and stuff can be related to uh, any career as well. But I kind of give examples and advice based on um, what I've done so far. 
Excellent. I can just see in our chat uh, section that many of our attendees are saying that they would like the book. And um, I just want to remind all of you that you actually have a chance to win. Um, actually, this book uh, signed by Alyssa, there will be three lucky ones of you who, uh, based on your questions, you will be able to win the book. Alyssa will choose the lucky winners at the very end of this webinar, so stay tuned. Do not go anywhere, even after we finish talking. Uh, but just to remind you, do not ask questions in the chat. Ask questions in the Q&A section. Uh, and if you see a question that has already been asked, do not ask it again, but instead just upvote it. Because the higher the question is on our list, the more chances there are that Alyssa will actually get a chance to answer it. So just a quick reminder for all of our audience. So for those of you who want the book, think of original, interesting, funny, um, perhaps uh, really inspired, inspirational questions you would like to ask Alyssa. And based on those, she will choose three lucky winners of her book with her autograph. Now, I'm um, sorry for that little break. Now, Alyssa, uh, back to you. Um, how, when did you write the book? Is that is that a recent book? Did you just come out? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty recent. It's not too old. Um, trying to remember exactly, I want to say either last year or like at towards the end or, or later part of 2018 but i'm pretty sure it was last year is like when it actually got released um so yeah it's a relatively new release um and so yeah just been trying to um kind of you know get more people interested and in wanting to see it um to hopefully help and inspire more people to follow their dreams Excellent. Um, you also uh, do a lot of speeches. Is that true? Because you were also one of our panelists uh, during our last uh, Has Space School. That was in January. We met in January. Uh, we had a large crowd of students from all over the world. And uh, you even spoke Spanish to them, if you remember correctly. So that means you also speak Spanish and quite well, I must add. Yeah, I mean, definitely speaking is a uh, big part of what I do as well. You know, I first got into speaking um, kind of just to spill the space history facts that I knew originally. And then also with the shuttle program ending, I was trying to, you know, advocate for possible missions to Mars, kind of get people understanding that it is a possibility. Um, and so that's kind of just what got me started. And then, uh, yeah, as I kind of continue with that, I started to enjoy speaking to kids even more and I started loving it. Um, more and more and being able to actually connect with students and inspire them was super awesome. So being able kind of any chance I can get um, to actually go out and speak with kids and possibly, you know, tell them the possible uh, career paths they can go down and tell them a little bit about space. Um, you know, it takes tens of thousands of people to send one astronaut to space. So trying to inspire those tens of thousands of kids to kind of grow up and fall into those space careers now. Excellent. That sounds lovely. I remember just how much our students loved you. Many of them positively obsessed with you. I know that for a fact. Uh, I'm bet that they are all watching you today. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. It's, it's a great honor and pleasure. We have such great feedback. And uh, yes, many, many of our students are even saying that your Spanish is amazing. Um, do you, when did you learn Spanish or how did you decide to learn Spanish? Was that something that you decided to do for um, the career or just for yourself? Um, I mean, so growing up, I went, to, I went to a international immersion school. So basically, um, from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade, I took uh, basically my subjects in four different languages, uh, Spanish being one of them. And we had people from all over the world kind of teaching languages. So if you were speaking Spanish, you would be from a Spanish speaking country. Um, so yeah, so we basically were fully immersed in the language, the culture, uh, everything about it. And so kind of doing that for, you know, however many years, like 13 years, you kind of eventually become pretty fluent in it. Um, so definitely French and Spanish my two strongest um but yeah it was definitely a very unique school and unique experience to kind of go through but yeah i'm super thankful for my languages just because i absolutely love being able to connect with people in their own language i definitely think it's such a unique uh connection between people and so with all the traveling that i've done it has definitely uh been helpful <laughs> excellent Do you, would you mind saying a few perhaps words or phrases in those languages that you speak i believe our audience would absolutely yeah. love that um, espero, hola, me llamo Alisa Carson y desde como tres años a mí me gusta uh, 
compartió mucho y espero que usted también seguir sus sueños. Um, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. I can see uh, many of our attendees just freaking out over your uh, Spanish speaking skill. Um, I believe they absolutely love that. And it just uh, brought them back to a time a few, few months ago when we actually all saw you speaking um, basically having an entire speech in Spanish. And I feel like that was something that definitely um, hit really close to heart, uh, many of our students, because, you know, it's, um, let me put it this way, pursuing a career as an astronaut is a giant goal. And uh, of course, many of our students would absolutely love to do that. However, not many of them have a chance. Perhaps their country doesn't even have a space program, um, such as, you know, Chile. Some of our students were from Chile and many of our attendees are today. Um, they they were really happy to you know have somebody who actually can speak to them in their native language and tell them about uh, what it what it basically entails to you know pursue this career uh, pursue this dream and uh, you speaking to them in their language I feel like that meant to them even more so than if you spoke in English so again I would like to thank you for that it's it's really amazing what you do and how you manage to inspire uh, all of those students do you um do you often interact with them. Do you interact with your fans much? Is that something that you like to do? Yeah, I mean, totally. Definitely. I mean, the biggest and most important thing of all of this is being able to reach as many people as possible, being able to inspire as many people and help as many people uh, follow their dreams and kind of help them along that way. So, yeah, being able to offer any advice that I can. I mean, obviously, a big uh, kind of push behind the book was that, you know, I would get so many mes messages about how to be an astronaut, um, which sometimes can be super difficult to kind of kind of detail the whole experience of like telling that you have to kind of decide what you own want to do so that was kind of the idea behind the book is kind of to reach and help more people but you know besides that I guess basic question uh yeah there's definitely been people along the way who have kind of tried to help and even just answering um any simple thank yous or whatever is always uh super important I think so hopefully uh, along that and even you know replying in different languages as well all the same just trying to inspire uh, as many kids as I can. Excellent, and thank you so much for that. I can see so much response uh, from all of our attendees. Um, they definitely are inspired, if anything else. Um, now, you already accomplished so much, and you still probably have so many other things you would like to accomplish. Uh, what is your plan for the next, let's say, five to 10 years? What would be your immediate goals and your little, maybe long-term goals? Yeah, well, I mean, right now, definitely most of the next few years is mainly going to be, uh, you know, just in school um, as I continue my degree. Um, I mean, at the same time, there are so, a few other things, you know, I want to do while in school, um, getting involved in, you know, some kind of project as well as continuing my flying experience. So, for example, um, you know, I have my private pilot's license, but I want to kind of continue get the next rating, which would be a instrument rating. Um, so just kind of get more experience with flying, you know, kind of, I guess, a few more levels of experience in the different areas and skills that I have. So possibly even, you know, scuba diving, going and getting, you know, another certi uh, certification within that. Um, so those kind of little things are kind of the next on my agenda. Um, but definitely kind of long term is really just kind of completing school um, and hopefully seeing to be the internships or any project that uh, I can with would definitely be the ultimate goal. Excellent. Uh, you've mentioned pilot license and scuba diving. Those are some things that maybe many people don't associate with, you know, astronauting. Uh, would you elaborate on what's the flight license for and what about scuba diving? How is that related to being an astronaut? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so kind of the path that uh, I've kind of chosen to go, da uh, go down and the path that I'm Kind of interested in pursuing is definitely being more of kind of a research scientist so i wouldn't necessarily be um you know a pilot or anything like that on the mission however it is important to have some sort of flight experience even if it's you know small planes or you know any sort of experience will be helpful because you know when you're looking at a mission to mars you can only have have so many people although you will have your specific role is important to kind of be able to have all the skills of all the different um, of all the different skill sets. 
And so kind of each person will have a little flight experience, you know, a little medical experience, but you'll have your main focus. And so that's kind of why I started pursuing my pilot's license, just to get a little flight experience. Uh, I ended up loving it so much kind of after that. Um, so it was definitely not too hard to continue working in and being uh, fully in love with it. So um, definitely kind of caught uh, onto that. Um, and then as well as scuba diving, you know, scuba diving and being underwater kind of the best we can do for long term simulation of microgravity kind of. You know, it's when you're in a pool, you can kind of lift up your friends and throw them around a little more easier than you could just do on the and so that's kind of the best we have and then also just in general getting comfortable with having like your own system you know, when you're scuba diving you have you know, a tank of oxygen that's the oxygen you have you don't have any more than that and you know you have to time out everything and it's the same way in space you know you're gonna if you leave um and go out into the vacuum of space you're only going to have so much time of oxygen having to be used to breathing off of something and so it just kind of builds those very uh kind of like basic skill sets that you could potentially be using in the future and just kind of getting used to that and like and just possible um you know simulations of microgravity to the best that we can do here on earth Mm -hmm. Now, you've mentioned all of these different aspects of training. That sounds like putting yourself into very uncomfortable positions, such as, you know, simulating microgravity or diving. And, you know, you have a very limited amount of time and you need to complete a specific task. That sounds like you need to really get used to being uncomfortable uh, well, or like getting yourself to be comfortable in really uncomfortable situations. Um, would you say that any part of the training was specifically hard or scary? Was there something that you did that you... You really didn't want to do but you had to pass nevertheless yeah i mean definitely there's been loads of stuff that is not necessarily the most comfortable or the most i guess enjoyable in the moment i mean definitely for example um for example getting my scuba diving cer uh, certification i remember one of my dives it was like the middle of april and it was freezing cold absolutely freezing um and just kind of getting yourself to kind of get in that water and go and do the dive and kind of complete everything it's definitely some uncomfortable situations and even you know some water survival training that i've done has been pretty physical and pretty i guess hardcore i would say definitely you know learning to blow up a life raft pull yourself into one or a spacesuit and then also pull yourself into a life raft being able to swim in a spacesuit all of these kinds of crazy things um have been i would say pretty intense for the most part um but i do think that at the same time you know i am exposed to some of these i guess relatively uncomfortable situations but i do think that it is loads of fun to kind of be in that uh, and you know build those experiences build those skills um so yeah overall it has been pretty fun even though some stuff hasn't been the absolute greatest, I suppose. <laughs> now, when you decided to become an astronaut, or you set your mind to it at such a young age, do you think you had an idea about the entire scope of the things that you will have to put yourself through to reach that goal? Because you decided really early on, you know, when you ask a three-year-old what they want to be, uh, usually girls would say they want to be princesses, and boys would say they want to be, well, maybe astronauts or, you know, kings or something really silly. But you had a really specific uh, job uh, choice, basically, at such a young age. Um, do you think you, when you, when you thought that you were mentally prepared or you had any idea what it would actually entail being an astronaut? Yeah, I mean, definitely when I first got interested, um, yeah, there really wasn't an idea as to, like, how intense it would be or exactly what I would be doing. I mean, obviously, uh, going to Space Camp kind of gave me a little bit more of an idea of, you know, what going into a scientific career or being an astronaut could look like. Um, but, yeah, as I've gotten older, it's definitely kind of developed into really understanding uh, what it means to be an astronaut and also you know, the importance of, you know, choosing that career and kind of laying down that foundation. Um, but, you know, also all of these crazy experiences that I've had, you know, flights and like I was saying with the water survival training, those are definitely things I never pictured myself doing or whatever that I would have done. Um, and so definitely uh, it's kind of been, you know, a shock to see all of these cool things that can actually help preparing to go and 
possibly be an astronaut and all the different skills you can learn. But uh, yeah, I definitely wasn't prepared for it in the beginning, but I am so glad that it all happened the way it did just because they have been absolutely unique experience. I'm so glad to have. It sounds amazing. Uh, just one more thing about that. Do you even remember what was the first impulse that, you know, put that idea in your head? Oh, astronaut, that sounds like a cool job. I would like to be that one day. Yeah, I mean, looking back, obviously, I don't remember all of my three-year-old thoughts necessarily too <laughs> intensely, um, or even, you know, kind of when I was young, in general, uh, kind of the best guess as to what me and my dad think could have done it um, is backyard again um just because we know that they into our episode at some point um so that's kind of the best guess that really just remembers me coming and asking questions about mars sometime when i was little um and then i had the poster for the mission to mars the backyard against episode uh hung up in my bedroom so one day we were like maybe that is it but really no one in my family uh had a science or space career so it's not like we were ever mentioning space or Mars. So for me to come and start asking questions about it was definitely bizarre. So that's kind of why it is our best guess. But yeah, we really don't entirely know. Well, you, you're working so it's becoming, um, you know, one of the first people to perhaps step foot on Mars. Um, I know Mars is like the next big, next big frontier, but to a young, young child that you were when, when you decided to pursue this, didn't Mars seem like a really inhabitable, um, really difficult place to kind of travel to? Like the conditions on Mars are probably not really welcoming to humans. Yeah, I mean, definitely um, it's crazy to kind of think about how all this has emerged. I mean, definitely when I was little saying I wanted to become an astronaut and I get involved in this and go to Mars, um, you know, at that time. Mars wasn't necessarily what we were looking at at that time. You know, it wasn't on, it wasn't the top of the radar at that moment. You know, it was uh, going to the National Space Station. We were still in the shuttle program, kind of towards the tail end of things. But, you know, at that time, Mars wasn't really the main focus. Yet, you know, I still had, you know, my hopes of going to Mars. Um, but it's crazy to see how it's kind of progressed because the more I've worked towards the dream, the more of a reality has really become uh, the way the space program has kind of emerged. So it has been really cool to kind of see that process uh, come about. Obviously, like you said, Mars is not the most friendly and habitable place that we have right now. Um, but it is super cool to see how technology has ad developed along with that to kind of make it possible for us to even live there in a habitat or uh, in spacesuits being able to walk on Mars. So I definitely think it's going to be really cool and to prove that, you know, humans have done something as crazy as go to another planet. And we have that, you know, incredible technology that so many people have been working on and continue to work on every day to be able to push our own boundaries of exploration. Now, is there some kind of a timeline for that? Is there a at least a ballpark of when do we think we would be able to perhaps send first people, and hopefully you included, to Mars? Right. So, I mean, definitely the timeline right now is looking for missions to Mars to be possibly in the early 2030s is the goal, 2033 sometime around that time. Um, you know, NASA has recently talked about their Artemis program and all the stuff that they're doing right now and continuing to build the uh, SLS Space Launch System rocket. So currently the goals would be to go back to the moon and then on to Mars. Um, so, you know, those those goals for this um, for these missions to Mars definitely have changed over the years and continue to change up to this point. But, um, yeah, definitely. I think right now we're still pretty on track, I would say, for getting to Mars in the early 2030s. I know there are, you know, people working so hard every single day to make that year a possibility and make that timeline a reality. And so it's so amazing to see the work being put into it. Um, I know, you know, I recently visited Mishu down in New Orleans, which is not too far from me. And they have been working on like the center core, um, the long, long center core for the SLS rocket and being able to meet so many people that worked project and you know seeing how hard they push to get that first one out and you know they're already working on the second one and it's just crazy to see how um how quickly everything is going how much work is being put into it definitely considering that you might be one of the first people to actually sit in that rocket and you know off to space you go 
that sounds great. And also that you have this right. opportunity to go and, you know, interact with those people. I feel like that probably brings you a whole lot of um, comfort. Is that, a, is that a correct word to use, perhaps? Knowing that, you know, you would be in good hands once you get up, up in there. You're supported by true experts in their fields and people who really work incredibly hard towards achieving all of our common goal. It's not just, I know, NASA's goal or just yours or mine. It's everybody else's too. So I feel like that should be a really great um, feeling to be part of such a large community of people working so, so hard towards achieving that common goal. Right. I mean, definitely. You know, I feel like a lot of people are kind of overwhelmed by space a little bit with all the dangers that we kind of see immediately. Um, you know, a lot of people may get, you know, terrified of radiation and uh, all of the different crazy temperatures of space and all all of this. But I definitely think the space program has done such an excellent job um, at keeping, you know, the astronauts as safe as we can possibly get them. So much time and so much safety goes into every single build that happens. And so, uh, you know, if you meet one person or talk to one who works anywhere in the space industry, you can automatically see their passion for it. You can all automatically see how important safety is for it. Um, and I think that is one of the really cool aspects of this career path and you know space careers in general is just how passionate everyone is about it you know everyone loves what they're doing that's amazing i hope that we can all find this kind of passion and you know work towards um together working towards achieving that giant goal um that we set for ourselves and for the rest of humanity that's excellent um i have last question for you before we can move on to um further on our program and q a session um uh, that would be after you do achieve that goal, so let's say in you know 2033, you do successfully get you know to be one of the first people to step foot on Mars. Um, what would be your personal goal for afterwards? What would you, once you check that off your bucket list, what would you still like to achieve in your lifetime? Yeah, so definitely the mission to Mars is going to be obviously the mission to uh, space that I hope to be a part. Of. Um, so after the mission to Mars, I wouldn't necessarily look towards going back to space again, most likely just because of, you know, all the time that the mission to Mars will probably put on my body um, and like losing, you know, muscle strength and bone density and all those things. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily go back to space. So I kind of retired as an astronaut. Um, I definitely would be interested and in, um being a part of continuing to do uh, some research with the stuff we get back. So continuing to do experiments or help out any way I can to kind of, um, you know, continue to contribute for anything that may have come from the mission. Um, at the same time, I'll probably continue doing uh, some speaking as well, I can kind of imagine. Um, but besides that, uh, it's mainly just going to be continuing to work, I guess, in my profession, um, which would be astrobiology and just kind of continuing to um, yeah, just kind of contribute anyway. And uh, yeah, hopefully inspire even more kids and continue to inspire um, even after the mission. Oh, I'm sure you have. And not just today, but throughout all these years when you have been speaking and attending all these seminars, I'm sure you've inspired many a child and uh, young adults to hopefully, you know, one day follow in your footsteps. And for that, uh, perhaps getting and reading your book could be one of the, you know, um, manuals. It's like a cheat, cheat sheet of sorts um, that uh, <laughs> students could um, in some way follow perhaps to, you know, hopefully one day becoming another Alyssa Carson. Okay, great. Um, so I'm sorry for the technical difficulties. We've had some issues here on our end, uh, but they seem to be resolved now. So um, let's get back to it. Uh, we have so many questions here. Um, many of them have been upvoted. So let's see. Um, Ahamza has asked about GSCES or degrees that you need to become an astronaut. So would you say that there is a specific degree you need um, to become an astronaut? I mean, definitely there is not one degree that you have to have to become an astronaut. So kind of the requirements is a bachelor's degree in any type of STEM career. So you can study any sort of science, math, engineering, technology, kind of anything under the STEM umbrella. So that includes so many different career opportunities, um, as well as you don't even have to study a STEM degree. You can also um, be a pilot as well. And so with that, they have a requirement of like the minimum number of hours you have to have flown. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the two main ways that you apply to be an astronaut. But again, there's not one degree you need. It's kind of just whatever you're interested in. Uh, when one 
to become an astronaut, you have to find what you want to do and then see how you can relate to space afterwards. Did you hear the question? Yeah, I can hear you. Hear you, hear you, hear you, hear you, hear you. Okay, so let me let me say it one more time. So we had Emiliano asking about your learning progress or process because learning um, or becoming an astronaut includes learning a lot of uh, difficult and mastering many of the difficult things. So how do you handle um, learning all these crazy hard things? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is not always um, the easiest, I guess, curriculum. Um, you know, a lot of it is, you know, kind of all chemistries, all physics, all biologies, all maps you kind of think of. Um, so definitely they are challenging. Um, it is pretty cool, though, to know that these are, you know, information that, you know, you could possibly use one day in like a future career. So you do know that 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 they are important and that it is important to retain them. Um, so yeah, it's mainly just staying uh, as focused as you can on schooling, really trying to understand the information. But also another huge thing is really just being able to ask for help when you need it or when you don't understand something. So going to all the resource centers, asking for all the help is super important to kind of really understand these crazy concepts that uh, are really difficult to learn in, at first. But I definitely think that, you know, being able to ask for help and really um, try to work as hard as you can on it um, kind of gets it to where, you know, it'll eventually become easier. Um, Sophia is curious about the biggest sacrifice you've had to make um, to pursue your dreams. Yeah, I mean, definitely growing up, I would do a whole lot of traveling. So, I mean, there were like some little things that I missed at school, like a like a carnival or, you know, little things like that. I mean, I definitely had to miss out on some things. I don't necessarily think that I missed out on anything that was super important. I definitely, you know, if there was something school related that I really wanted to do, we kind of just made it work. Um, and so I definitely think that it was all about choosing what was right in the moment. You know, sometimes if there's a choice to go and travel or if there was, you know, kind of, I guess, your basic teenager thing or whatever. Um, it was just all about choosing what was right at that time and what was the most important. So I definitely do think that there has been some stuff that I've sacrificed along the way. Also, you know, just putting so much time into this uh, in general. But I definitely think that it was all totally worth it. Thing you would regret miss, you know, getting through the training and missing the carnival um, at your high school. It's probably uh, better to do the other thing around. And now Vicente is asking about whether or not you have any hobbies that are not related to science, because we know that you, you know, you do many things related to science on a daily basis. But do you have any hobbies that are in no way related to science? Yeah, totally. I mean, growing up, uh, I played competitive soccer or football since some of you are from obviously other countries but um yeah soccer was a big part of my life like i said playing it for 10 years was um definitely pretty consuming i did um you know competitive and then i started doing uh, slightly less competitive and just for fun um you know also doing piano i did dance when i was younger um but kind of grew out of that i mean to this day um you know there are you know if i'm just relaxing you know i'm a big <laughs> netflix watcher i love netflix um or even you know painting or you know Know, whatever it might be um i love doing little projects so definitely uh fill my time with stuff other than just space <laughs> that's actually great to know as well um now having having gone through all of this if you reflect on your journey is there anything you would have done differently and if so why um i mean looking back obviously um I mean, there's been some stuff that necessarily hasn't been the most beneficial um, at the time, but I definitely don't necessarily regret anything that I've done so far. I've definitely loved all the experiences I've gotten to do. Um, you know, it's been so much fun to be able to kind of continue building all that's kind of happened so far and just kind kind of build my skill set and continue to do more interesting trainings. So like I said, I've really enjoyed everything that I've done. There isn't necessarily one thing that like sticks out that was really terrible or that I wouldn't have done. Um, 
I definitely, you know, kind of along the way, there's been stuff that like I almost stopped doing, but I'm really glad that I continued to do it. So for example, flying was a big one at the, you know, my first few flights, I really wanted to quit and I wasn't really uh, that interested in flying. I didn't really think it was going to work out, but I ended up absolutely loving it. So there has been some things that I almost kind of gave up that I am really glad that I didn't. Great, and um, follow up question from um, Joanne. What's the hardest hurdle you've experienced through achieving your dream? So there so, were many different, what was the hardest one? Yeah, definitely. I mean, definitely one of the hardest things that has, that uh, going through so far has definitely just been um, one, I mean, time management balance in school at the same time as all this, um, trying to keep school as the most important because without it, obviously I can't reach where I want to go. Um, but at the same time, definitely just being uh, the youngest at a lot of things and just trying to push those boundaries. So really push for, you know, being um, or getting younger kids allowed to do more things or, you know, just kind of pushing that uh, idea that I guess, you know, teenagers aren't able to do some of these pretty incredible things. So really just working hard to um, have and let people realize that teenagers are capable of doing some of these pretty crazy uh, things. And yeah, just kind of getting that exposure out there and, um, you know, really surprising people at what uh, can actually be done even when you're young. That's true. That's true. That's many things we can probably do at a really young age as well. Um, another one of the questions uh, from our viewer, Tim Ho Curtis Leo, is um, whether you've tried space food, and if so, which one is your favorite? Yeah, I mean, so definitely I've tried all, some stuff. I mean, I've tried like astronaut ice cream, which they sell in gift shops, which obviously is not directly what the astronauts eat up in space. Um, I've also, uh, I used to eat like so regularly that I think they would sell it at like space centers, but they would basically have like this peanut butter stick. So it was like this stick thing of peanut butter, but I would like eat it as a snack. And I used to eat that all the time. I had like a little astronaut on the package. Um, but I mean, honestly, space food nowadays is so similar to food down here. Um, I mean, astronauts up in space and up on the International Space Station, you know, they'll have mac and cheese and PB&J tortillas and uh, all kinds of stuff like that. So um, for the most part, it's not too different. It's not quite the uh, like the toothpaste tubes that uh, the astronauts used to have to eat. A little better by now too. With all the technology and science that we put into space programs, I, I would hope that the food would taste um, better than uh, toothpaste. Um, now, uh, <laughs> Chia Shinu has a question about um, a role of space medical doctors to astronauts. Uh, do you think that these are really important or helpful for the astronauts? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the whole field of medicine in general is obviously super important in the space industry. Um, obviously, we have to have someone with a medical, um, a lot of medical experience on the mission, um, just, just in case anything happens. Uh, like I said before, I mean, obviously, everyone will have some degree of medical experience. Um, but definitely just staying um, and having kind of someone who is kind of a medical officer uh, will be super important. Obviously, all the astronauts have to stay in the best health as possible. And also just in general, um, studying the effects of space on the body has been super huge uh, in studying space physiology. And so that is another big part of what a lot of kind of more of the medical um, uh, astronauts kind of work in, and that's kind of the region that they really contribute to, uh, is really understanding more about us and how we can spend longer in space or what is kind of our boundaries, how we can push that. Uh, and so, yeah, it's super important to be able to study all areas of science, including medicine, um, and, you know, even bringing, trying to, you know, create new types of medicine in space while being in uh, like a zero gravity environment. There's all kinds of interesting stuff going on in the medical field uh, that's going on up in space. Thank you for that. And I have perhaps a last question we have a time for, and uh, that comes from Simsar. And the question is, what would be the first message to the world from Mars? So once you step foot on a Mars, do you have a phrase prepared that you would like to say once you, once you step your foot on the Mars soil? 
Um, I mean, there's not necessarily something that I have planned out already. Um, I'm not uh, quite sure how I could, <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know of anything right now that would just be this perfect, like, really intense sentence that's going to mean so much to so many people. Um, so hopefully, you know, if the time comes when we're on Mars, hopefully I'll have something figured out. But as of right now, I'm not entirely sure what would be the most appropriate and like significant thing to say. Um, but it is pretty crazy to have people such as like Neil Armstrong set. So um, I guess kind of a high standard for what we should say when we first get there. <laughs> Think about that. So hopefully you will you will be able to come up with a with a, the right answer. Um, until then, um, I think that kind of concludes our Q and A session. But uh, we still have the three books that three lucky of you guys can win. So um, Alyssa, if you can see the Q and A part on your right hand side, would you mind maybe scrolling and choosing um, three of the lucky winners of your autograph book? Yes. yes. Okay. I will. Okay. Pick up. So drum so roll, drum everybody. Roll. Uh, oh goodness. Okay. 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 Um, every time I like look up, it, like goes down because you guys keep typing. That's so funny. Um, okay, so the first winner is going to be Alejandro Puentes. Yes, guess. Um, oh, goodness, I was going to read what he uh, asked as the question. Like, oh, here we go. What is your opinion on the Artemis program and would you like to participate in it? I definitely think that the Artemis program is super exciting to be uh, bringing into the future and uh, going to be super exciting to see new missions kind of come and arise uh, in this space program. So I'm excited to see what all is going to come of it. Um, the next winner is going to be, um, oh Lord. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do Camila Arredondo is how you pronounce her last name. I'm really sorry if that's wrong, but that would be my best guess. She asked, do you know any other languages? Um, yeah, just speaking a little Spanish on this earlier, um, but languages is something that could be really useful in the space program. So it's really awesome um, to ask and really be aware of uh, all the different skill sets that could possibly be helpful in the space program. You never know what skills um, really could be useful. So possibly knowing other languages could be pretty cool. Um, and then our last winner is going to be, uh, oh gosh, you guys make this so, so difficult and like jotting it down. Um, uh, Okay, so our last winner is going to be, uh, let's see, let's see, Francisca Sanita, oh, your last name was cut off, but it starts, Paul. I can't see the end of the last name, but the question is, how does fulfilling your dreams since childhood make you feel? Um, I definitely think it's super important for you guys to focus on what you're passionate about and really continue to um, pursue those. So I absolutely love being able to continue to work on something that is really dear and passionate to my heart. Um, so I really hope that you guys can have that same experience and can continue to work uh, on something uh, that you guys enjoy. So congratulations, Francisca. Thank you so much for that question and yeah you guys really continue to follow your own dreams and congr congratulations to uh those winners 
Crystal, again, uh, so to those three lucky of you, Alejandro, Camila, and Francisca, please stay tuned. Do not go anywhere. Our staff will contact you afterwards with uh, figuring out the logistics of how we can get Alyssa autographed books um, to you. Now, to the rest of you, uh, thank you so much for sending in your questions. There were so many great questions. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to answer all of them, but I hope that uh, this only motivates you to you know, further pursue um, being this curious and showing interest in something that you know you would perhaps one day like to um do as your job or find as your future career so please do not go anywhere um a little spoiler alert as i already mentioned uh, earlier in two weeks time we will have dr leroy chow as our next uh, guest at this has motivational webinar so dr chow will tell us something more about the future of space travel he is uh, working very closely with spacex that we have brought up uh, earlier so um if you're interested you can click or you can actually uh, scan the qr code Alyssa, do you mind if we say goodbye together yeah thank yes, you guys yes. Sure, I know yeah. that in, in you know in space related programs uh, they do a little countdown. <laughs> so should we count to three and say goodbye together? Sure. Excellent. So thank you all guys for tuning in and we'll see you in two weeks. Thank you again, Alyssa. And on three, two, one. Good